Well, of course, I'm going to move on to diversification because a lot of the growers, uh, well, 30, 40, 50 years ago, moved, uh, uh, well, alongside flowers, did early potatoes as well. Were you involved in that as well? I used to send 100 tonnes of early potatoes to the early potato market, loved it, and about 100 tonnes of early potatoes and three or 4,000 boxes of flowers. And when I first came home, we had a dairy herd of about six Guernsey cows, and I, I enjoyed that. Used to milk them by hand in the fields in the summertime and in, in the cow shed in the winter. And it was something I enjoyed. And we had a few followers, heifers and, and uh, steers, which we used to slaughter in the slaughterhouse, just by Bill Pender's house in the church. You know, but it's not still used. But with the increased bureaucracy and nonsense that we have to be involved with these days, You'd have to have a vet at each slaughtering, and because there was only cold running water there, they, you'd have to have, oh, I don't know, nobody ever died of poisoning, did they? No, no, I did read a report that it takes about 150 gallons of water per kill uh, these days, but, uh, yeah. and of course, one of the reasons perhaps for not having an abattoir was the water shortage a few years ago. Well, it might, it might have been, I th tend to think it was more the increased interference by the bureaucrats, you know, uh, which unfortunately happens everywhere and happens in Surrey. What sort of characters did you have on the farm in those early days then? Because, uh, you know, there must be well, quite a few. There were. I mean, up to the people that worked, I like to think, with me rather than for me, were, were all characters. Ron Simmons, and what a, what a, an interesting man he was. You know, built Sprayview down there and, was an excellent fisherman and and was interested in archaeology and we f would find flint uh, arrowheads and all when we were crooking out bulbs. Um, yeah, there were lots lots of characters. Uh, I'm trying to think. You know, Reg Palmer worked for me for years and years, and uh, Billy Munn, who used to play double bass in 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 the town band, the, the town band and. Uh, Oh, that's so amusing. I remember once we used to stop for Smoko and, uh, and I found a, a nest of mice and Bill Munn would always have his thermos of coffee and then after his coffee he would put his hand in his pocket to get his roll-ups out and I'd <laughs> put the nest of mice in his pocket and <laughs> just the, the, <laughs> the look on his face as he put his hand in his pocket. Stupid things but you know, happy, happy memories. <laughs> oh dear! How many how many sort of acres did you have up here then? Forty forty two acres. So it must have been one of the biggest farms in on St Mary's. Farms from really from almost Carnveen entrance on the bottom side down to Carn Friars, and of course before the big freeze killed a lot of the hedges here, we had I used to trim. There's a mile and a half of Pittosporum, Euonymus, Veronica and Escalonia hedges by hand with a hook up each side and al along the top. You know, you wonder how you did it in those days, fit as a butcher's dog. And these days, um, there are no weights. You aren't allowed to lift any weight over 25 kilos. I think if you're at the airport, it's less than that. But everything was 100 weights in those days. And um, I, the, ch the changes are good in many ways. And in some ways, they aren't. Mm. Of course, you weren't only involved in farming as well, because so uh, your family's got a long connection with the steamship company as well. Yeah, it has, and a very proud connection from grandfathers, fathers, and I. I was involved in Terry's involved there, and, and Andrew May, of course, is is chairman. Um, and I could talk at great length about what's happening at the moment, but I think that's not going. That's not old time memories. That's that's modern nonsense. Um, yeah, and of course, as you know, and your earliest memories begin a bit after mine. But some of the happiest memories are island sports, when there were five cricket teams on the island. St Agnes had one. Tresco and Briar combined, and St Martins and two clubs on St Mary's, and we had a league, and it was great, great fun. And although the, the cricket still goes, um, the change of situations in Scilly from 
from farming and a bit of tourism to a lot of tourism and some farming now makes it difficult to to play sport at the weekends and also I'm happy to say the burgeoning gig situation which has been tremendous for the islands um, one thing I regret is that when the gigs really started again I didn't I've never rode in a gig and I would have liked to have done that but um, it just so I must say at the age when I was so busy and the youngsters came into the gigs and what a good thing for the Irons that is now and how well how well run it is yeah I think you share that with Clive Mumford actually Clive's never rode in a gig either no we've both done lots of interesting things some of which we can't talk about but uh, yeah Clive Mumford when I lived at the Normandy Big House Clive lived for a while with his first wife, Diane, down there, um, and I and Rebecca. Rebecca is my goddaughter, and uh, so we're very close. And Clive and I used to play snooker every evening in, in the snooker table I had down there, and he was a bit better than me, but we used to keep scores, and I'd win one frame in about four, I think, <laughs> with lots of amusement. Yeah. So, um, schooling over here, I suppose you went to school at uh, Con Thomas to start with. I did. went to school at Con Thomas till I was nine and enjoyed that. Got thick ears from Lizzie Rogers, like a lot of people. And then went away to Truro and I enjoyed that. It was in the war. I enjoyed that. Um, I remember being at school when there was an outbreak of polio in the school. And of the 350 or 400 people there, the only p kids that weren't allowed home were the ones, what were they, two or three from Scilly, and those with overseas parents. The council wouldn't allow the ones from Scilly home, quite rightly. Didn't want to bring, um, what was it called? It wasn't called, there was... Polio violated, what, the infection? Yeah, it was, uh, oh, it's got a new name, he said. Anyway, I had happy memories of, of being a true, happy memories of playing rugby, from the age of 18 to 21 for the Pirates. Um, that's, that was an interesting situation, you yeah. know. So, uh, and I remember the war. I remember bombing, and I, the crater going up the the uh, seventh fairway. I remember that happening. That, that crater, which is still there, and you know where it is, a bit of depression, that was done by a Stuka dive bomber having a go at the radio station which was in the field near the road. Remember the day it happened. Big bang and lots of excitement. 